simple self-defense tools. I'm gonna to show you this Irish shillelagh. It's a simple self-defense tool. It's a walking stick. You can use any kind of walking stick. These happen to be gifts from Doug. Doug sent me these. Thank you again, Doug. This first one is not a walking stick. This is more like a war hammer. And these have these big things. I just wanna show you, I know I've been talking about these a little bit. This, I could probably easily put a hole in that. I'm not gonna do that. There's a lot of water in there. But this is a very heavy, but very handy self-defense tool. This, you probably couldn't carry around without getting in trouble. You can't walk around that would show intent that you wanted to hurt somebody or fight somebody. So this one's a little bit too short, but I did think you'd like to see that. That's a beautiful shillelagh. That's a war hammer. Here's a cudgel. It's a little bit shorter. You can see the beautiful Irish there. Made in the town of shillelagh by a family that makes shillelaghs for years and years. This is also, it's extremely hard. There's some lead there inside. These things are indestructible, just about. This thing will last you years and years and years. And then... This one is an everyday walking stick. This is the Irish shillelagh, Irish fighting stick, whatever you want to call it. Hello, Doug. Uh, Doug sent me these, so thank you, Doug. These are beautiful. Doug, I wanted to throw those in there because I know people keep asking me about them. I keep telling you about them. I don't sell these. These are a gift. But this basic walking stick allows me to have a tool with me, a simple self-defense tool, wherever I go, and I can just quickly step into a position by lifting it from here straight to here, and now I'm in a uh, defensive position. Oh, David said, great sticks, thanks David. All right, so from here I have two ways to get into that protected position. One is to slide my hand down the back, pop it up, and I can thrust hitting with that big knuckle there. Now, if, if yours is not an Irish shillelagh, it doesn't have to be. This works with any walking stick. This also works with a simple dowel rod that you can turn into a walking stick for about 10 bucks. Slide your hand down there, you get in this better position, your hands are up, this one's open, and you're saying stop. You have to verbalize the fact that you want them to stop, that you need them to stop, they can't come any closer, don't get, I will defend myself. You wanna uh, announce that so that everybody who might be watching, any cameras that might be picking it up, because there are cameras everywhere now, hears you, sees you defending yourself. You're saying, I don't wanna fight, don't, but you're going to defend yourself. Back up, don't come any closer. Then you can thrust it immediately into his face for self-defense, smashing nose, eyes, teeth, throat, solar plexus, anywhere in that center line. So from here, you slide down the back and then pick it up and strike as forcefully as you can. Now the way these things are made, and again, this is the Irish shillelagh, this works with any walking stick, 36 inches, your hand just goes down, you get a little bit right there, and then you thrust. That second motion, you can bring this around and almost like a backhand slashing motion. From here, that's the threat. I bring that around right across his face, across the jaw, across the neck, across the arm. Thank you, David. David says, straightforward practical advice. That's what I hope to give. I slide down the back, thrust first, strike here. I can turn my hand and get it into that other hand, and now I can come down using this almost as a hammer, or I can bring this across, punching with it this way, and I can shove straight back into his face, smashing. And again, this hard, this black thorn, this hard piece of wood. And yours doesn't have to be a fancy Irish shillelagh. It can be an oak dowel or a hickory dowel or, or even a poplar wood. You go and get poplar, sand it down, put a little oil on it. You've got yourself a self-defense tool, a walking stick. Your hand slides down, thrust first, bring it through this way, turn it in the other hand, pushing, and then with two hands, you can now thrust again. You can come down over the top. Think of a bayonet attack with a rifle, military style. You can come up and into the face. Just think about what targets can you remove or destroy? His ability to see, breathe temporarily or permanently. His strike the ear, strike the temple, the top of the head, going into the throat, breathe permanently, asphyxiation, he's dead for self-defense. God forbid, but if you have to, if it's you or him, you go home safe right into the solar plexus, striking all that soft tissue, breaking that cartilage, crushing it, sending that diaphragm into a spasm. If you've ever had your wind knocked out, you know, you can't catch your breath, you think you're gonna die, all of a sudden he's on the ground, or lower. But think about belly button to the private parts, that thin fascia of muscle that holds your guts in. All of a sudden he's got a hernia, or that goes into a spasm, and he's on the ground, he can't move. For self-defense, that's all you need. Or you can bring that motion 
that turning motion in and strike his thighs, hit that sciatic nerve. It's a sympathetic nerve, meaning both legs are gonna go down or smashing into one of the joints, just bringing it across simply this way. Temple, neck, if you ask yourself, what targets can you remove or destroy using this hard piece of wood, you're gonna know which technique is gonna work best for you. So once again, from this position, I slide down the back. I'm in a better position, you're too close. I want this between me and the threat, and I can go immediately into the face. I can bring this around, boxing into the ear, into the temple, into the neck, hit that uh, nerve process in there that flushes the blood out of his brain, goes down like a sack of potatoes. Smashing here, and then follow through with that strike, or smashing into the arm, smashing into the ribs with these hooking punches. That's another great technique. You can also, instead of straight forward, you can bring this straight up onto the jaw or under the jaw, smashing his teeth, smashing his jaw, biting his own tongue, all for self-defense. The point is, if you keep it simple and you keep your strikes forceful and direct, immediate direct explosive means the shortest distance is that straight line, direct, immediate is like now, direct, that short distance, and explosive, full commitment on every strike. You get there by practicing. So get in this position, slide down, get in this better position, thrusting, jabbing, or hooking, right? Uh, come up straight under the jaw, practice each one. As you get warmed up, go faster and faster, and then throw it in the other hand, throw it in the left hand, do the same side. Become ambidextrous with your walking stick. The second thing on the simple self-defense tool, once you to be able to defend yourself with a simple self-defense tool with a walking stick, your hand slides down the front, and now you're in this position, almost like you're carrying a, sh a short sword, a baton. From here, you can thrust, strike down, strike down, striking across, horizontally at every level. You go to the legs, you go to the knees, you go to the temple, you go to the head, you go to that neck, you go to the eyes. Whatever you can remove or destroy for self-defense, that's the basic principle. And then think about straight down on top, coming from this side or coming from this side. Both sides are correct. Think about striking joints, striking the hand, striking the, the hand that's got the knife, the hand that's trying to punch you, the hand that's holding on to your loved one or your friend, and you strike that. Go for a joint. Joints break easily, more easily, especially with something like this. This is extremely strong, and I've been uh, cautious with my, my gear. I'll go a little harder on those bags, but not because I think I'm going to break this. I won't. I don't want to tear those things up. Those cost money. So from here, sliding down the front, getting in this position, you can also, if you needed to block, you could block. There are all kinds of ways to block using this, almost like a sword. I wouldn't advise it. I'm not a fan of blocking when it comes to self-defense. I love to block in a pumse or a kata or a form. It looks really pretty. Or if I want to do some stunt fighting and help choreograph a... Um, whether the Pirates of Penzance or one of these uh, musical plays or what's the other one? Peter Pan. You know, Peter Pan, they asked me, hey, can you teach us the local high school? I'll do that all day long. But that's for fantasy. That's for fancy, right? If I'm talking about on the street, someone's got a knife and they might stab me with it or hit me with it. They got a chunk of concrete. I saw a baseball bat earlier. Someone's coming in with a baseball bat and I'm not sure their intention. I'm not going to be blocking his baseball bat. I'm going to take this and I'm going to blast him with it. And that's what I want you to think about. Instead of blocking and parrying, which takes good timing and distance and proper technique, take the poo two hands on that thing and stick it right in his face. Smashing nose, teeth, throat, eyes into the body. Create distance. He's coming forward to hit you, and you come straight in like that. He goes flying back. That's why I say blast him. Don't block, but blast. That's my personal opinion. From here, slide down the front. Get into that better position. Practice your thrusting motions. Practice your slashing at this angle. You can also bring that up. You can bring it across. You've got horizontal. You've got vertical straight down. You put the two hands on it. You blast them. You hit the guy over here. You get the guy here. Someone's behind you. Step into it. Always look. Turn your head before you turn your body. Step in and strike. Step in and strike. Put those in combination and practice it that way. I'm going to show you at the very end a basic kata that you can do with your shillelagh walking stick or any walking stick. This is just a basic self-defense tool. Self-defense tools that work. Self-defense tools that are practical, that you can carry with you anywhere you want. You just keep it simple, keep it basic. All right, 
So we're down here. I want to bring this up here and show you a shillelagh specific, an Irish fighting stick specific move, and that's this position. The stick is in two hands. It's between you and the threat. You're going to open one hand and smack. Just bring it out. Think about what you're striking. This is a fast, explosive, quick strike. Remember, immediate, direct, explosive. It's very disruptive, too, because it's flying at his face. It's going to hit him in the temple. It's going to hit him in the jaw. It's going to hit him in the neck. You strike really quickly. One, two, and then bam, that big knuckle, that big hammer. See that? That knot, that hard burl of wood inside of this, I don't know if you can hear it shaking, is lead. They put some lead in there. I don't know how they do it. I think you can go on their website and find out. By the way, if you want to see these, again, I have no relationship to this company. This is a gift from Doug. Um, it's made in the town of Shillelagh, Ireland. One of my favorite songs growing up as a kid. I, I can't sing it here. It's got a lot of potty words in it. Uh, but basically, he's carrying a Shillelagh. And he says he's Irish, but he's not a leprechaun. It's one of my favorite, favorite phrases or favorite uh, lyrics in a song. He says, I'm Irish, but I'm not a leprechaun. He's talking about carrying a shillelagh and what he's going to do with his shillelagh if he has to for self-defense. I don't think it's about self-defense, but I throw that in there because that's my disclaimer. All right, so you're in this position. I've got one foot forward, and that foot doesn't matter. Just It should be your power side, right? You're going to smack, two, smash, one, two, smash. Notice that when I'm doing that second strike, I'm turning my hip to extend my reach. I can finish by bringing that big hammer down on top of his head, right? Squash that grape for self fits. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Practice that in combination. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get, the faster you're gonna get. All of this is gonna make your hands so much stronger, you're gonna get healthier. You're learning how to use this simple self-defense tool, the walking stick for self-defense. And you can make it yourself. It could be a homemade self-defense tool. In this position, sliding down, better position, thrusts, slashing strikes down and up, horizontal strikes, vertical strikes down. You can also bring them up under the chin, up under the groin, lift them off the ground a little bit. You can do from this position, um, what happened? Oh, two hands, smashing here, thrusting with two hands in, straight in, Rifle butt attack and bayonet strike, right? Bayonet attack. Side to side, striking the ribs. The guy comes up. He's on your side over here. Bam! Get him real quick. He's on your side over here. Grab it here. You can even kind of pull cue it a little bit. Use that big knot or use that, that hard tip. Smash it into him, right? Smash, smash. And I'm going to show you a new technique. What happens if they grab? Because I found something better. I, I, I. I don't know how I forgot this technique. This was shown to me by a very high ranking uh, Korean grandmaster from a long time ago. And just, uh, it's so much faster than the twist and turn, which I still like, it's still a great technique, but it's, uh, it's a very powerful technique, extremely uh, painful, but you have to have a little bit of technique. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. All right, Doug says the physical training is also really good for physical health for this training. Now, I wanted to show you one more way you might carry it, which is kind of like, a baton, you just have your hand in the middle and you're walking down the street, you can get it into the other hand simply by turning or turning. If you turn it up, think about chopping. If you turn it over, think about pushing and slashing. Think about thrusting. If you turn it up, think about bringing it up or bringing it down. Think about more sword, more technique. That's with this, what's called a split grip, right? That's just turning it up like this. If you turn it over, you get in this position, think about pushing and shoving. Think about thrusting. Think about pushing this out from your hand, bam. And it doesn't seem like it would work, but trust me, they're very effective. When we put the pads on and we stress test with these, that's very disruptive, it hits really hard. There are many, many ways you can use it if you keep it simple. That's why I call it a simple self-defense tool. And the walking stick doesn't get more simple than this. You can be carrying an umbrella, you can be carrying a walking cane, a walking stick, a hiking stick, a lecky, one of those uh, lecky trekking poles. You know, maybe you're, uh, you do the telemark skiing or whatever, you do the telemarking poles and they all work. All right, yeah, uh, Doug says great separator, rib separator with a knob. Amen to that. That's like the perfect, perfect width and the perfect shape 
to break in there and snatch a whole bunch of stuff loose. And that last rib, they call that the floating rib, that thing detaches really easily and goes into the lungs. They're coughing up blood. They're, it's hard for them to carry, carry on their attack, press the attack against you. For self-defense, that's very effective. A lot of things you can do there. One of the best things you can do in this position you're just like, back up, you're too close. Remember that verbal command. You don't have any, you know, you don't have to like me, but you can't touch me. You don't have to agree with my politics or how I dress or what I look like or who I'm with, but you can't touch me. You can't back up, bam, then straight into the face, straight into the throat, into the solar plexus and hit him like that. Now, I promised you a kata. This kata is, it's your choice, right? Everything's your choice. You don't have to listen to me. But if you want to learn a kata, you want to learn a pumse, that's what Koreans call it, Japanese call it kata, um, everybody else calls it a pattern or choreography, if you want to learn a set number of moves that you can do, practice over and over again, that both disguises repetition. And if you like simple self-defense tools, please give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. I appreciate it when you do that very much, more than you would know. From here, in this position, if you want to learn this kata, follow me. You step into a ready position. So from here, this is my right side. I have the right hand. I step into this ready position. This just puts the cane or the walking stick between me and the threat. Number two, I'm going to thrust. Number three, I come to the shoulder, slashing down, slashing down. I come with my feet together and I blast them. I'm going to use this big knuckle, smashing through the ribs, smashing through the ribs, stepping back into the groin. And then I'm going to snap this out and break that knee, the guy behind me, right? We're going to pretend there's a guy behind me. Then turn and slash up, step through and slash up, turning your hand up so your palm is facing the sky, bring that one through, turn it down so your palm is facing the ground. And by the way, you do that palm up so that when you run into his body for self-defense, it doesn't peel out of your hand. If my hand were like this and I run into resistance, it just snaps right out. See what's happening? My fingers are pulling off. That leverage pulls it out. But if my palm is up and I run into resistance, it runs into the web of my hand. So I bring it palm up, palm down for the same reason. As I come across, see that lever that doesn't pull it out. Bring it back around, strike down on his head, and then I'm going to bring this into my chest like I'm holding a rifle. Remember the old green, GI, or green men, green army men? Used to, when you were a little kid, you used to play with those things. And they always had the guy with the bayonet like this, the rifle. So I'm, uh, you might not, I, I, I always get that picture in my head. But that's what that is. That's a bayonet attack. You're coming down and into the body. David says, thanks for the excellent training. You're welcome, David. Thank you for being here. Now from here, I'm going to step back and simply put it into the other hand. Start in the ground, on the ground. So I want to do both sides evenly. I was going to spin it and twirl it for you, but we're going to save that for another one. I'm going to step in here, thrust, shoulder down, shoulder down, bring the feet together and push. And that's not a, that's not a little push. That's a smash his teeth down his throat. Close with and destroy for self-defense. Smash, come to the side, come to the other side, step back, look, smash in, turn your wrist and break the knee. From here, turn your palm up. Slice through, step through, slice through on the other side, slice down, bring it up, stepping in and strike into the head and then put it into the other hand and start over. So from the side, this is my right side, we'll be going this way, I'm going to step into a better position. Thrust is number two, three, four, step in and push five. To the side and strike six, to the other side, seven, Stepping back to the right, eight, nine. Turn your hand under, bring it up, 10. Step through, 11. Straight down, 12. Bring it up and thrust into his throat. Stepping back, putting in the other hand. Facing this way, this is my left side. Get a little bit closer because I know the stick, because it's black, disappears with all these bags back here. I want to get in a better position. Notice how I slide my hand down the shaft a little bit so I have some coming out the back. I can also use that to jab for self-defense. From here, I step in, better position, thrust from the shoulder, from the shoulder, stepping through and pushing, push to one side, push to the other side, step back to the original side, 
because I start on the left on this side. And then strike here, and then I'm going to smash that knee. I'm going to turn that hand under, slicing up, step through, slicing up, down on top. Bring this hand in as I step in and thrust, finishing them off. Always coming down at an angle, straight up, and come up at an angle. Whatever your target is that you want to remove or destroy for self-defense. But that's the basic kata. Let's do it together one more time. And then I've got one more class tonight. I taught a whole bunch this week. I'm up to 47 classes. You, you guys are four, number 47. All right. Of course I always count you. You're part of my... You're part of this, you're part of this school as much as anybody else. I appreciate you so much. Especially those of you who have joined as members. From here, step in. Or comment or whatever. Two, three, four. It's a virtual dojo community. Side, side, back, knee. Strike through, strike through. One, two, down, and thrust. Other hand, step in on the other side. One, two, angle, angle, together and blast them to the side, to the other side. I always feel like Charlie Chaplin when I do that. Back here, smash. Turn it up, bring it through here, bring it through here. I almost forgot that one. I think I forgot that earlier. Side to side, down on top, up, right through his eyeball. The eyeball's over there. The camera's always moving. Through here, and then step back, put in the other hand, and that's it. You guys have been awesome. I have another class there at the door. I'll see you in a little bit. Oh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't anymore. Zero gluten. This is, oh, yours is a brass knob. This is off. This is the Irish shillelagh. This was from Doug. Thank you, Christopher. It's good to see you. It's good to see everybody. Please give me a thumbs up if you haven't. And uh, subscribe if you